when you're thinking what Christmas gifts you can give your teenage son, husband, father, or any man close to your heart, think of Gillette. There's a Gillette razor priced for every budget. And here in the Gillette three-weight trio, there's a light, medium, or heavy razor to suit any skin or beard exactly. Buy one with Blue Blade Dispenser in this handy travel case for only 15 shillings. See this Gillette set in a high-quality red leatherette case for 32 and 6. Has a one-piece razor and Blue Blade Dispenser. Here's the Gillette Aristocrat in this handsome lizard grain case for 45 shillings. A heavily plated one-piece razor and Blue Blade Dispenser. And just arrived from America, this magnificent Gillette adjustable razor at seven pounds, 10 and six. This razor has nine precision adjustments to suit every skin condition. This Christmas, buy him Gillette, the only way to get a real man shave. Hey everyone, Matt Basarsik from RazorEmporium.com. Moving along in our Razor Archive series to one of my most exciting, most loved periods of time, the Gillette Adjustable Razor Series. Now we did an entire video going through the history of every adjustable razor. Today we're going to break down and talk a little bit more about just the very first model, the toggle. Now this is a razor that started it all for Gillette when it came to adjusting the razor and it came out of the Super Speed Trio. So Gillette had tremendous success with the light, the regular and the heavy Super Speeds and Due to some internal company memos, we know that they wanted to take that same concept and apply it to one razor to rule them all. One razor to bring all that adjustability together. It is this razor, the toggle. Now, um, the toggle razor is most notably, you know, denoted, most notably denoted, <laughs> by a adjustment dial and of course this real gimmicky kind of interesting looking contraption at the bottom and no guys if you've seen this in my videos this is not open this is a, a model from the Gillette modeling shop and it is meant for a store display uh, it was actually for a convention and it's not functional I remember when I got this it was my very first scene I had to see if it opened I was like oh man but regardless um, this was the first razor model from the toggle and this came out in 1956 1957 time frame and this is the first first era and this can be seen with the little red dot on the toggle lever itself the toggle lever is kind of shorter and stubbier compared to your normal production toggle and it's also only going to go one through five so there's no one through nine on here there's little hash marks on the dial the dial does not or sorry the toggle mechanism does not work both ways it only It'll open on one side, and then the other side is for cleaning. It would just pop it open like this, so you can run water through the head and, and clearing out the uh, shaving gunk out of the you know razor head. And then you also notice the inside looks like a super speed. It doesn't have that forked kind of look like the production toggles do later, like this guy. So they look very different inside. And they're completely different assembled. They're, they're very different razors. Um, but this started it all. And, you know, there's an entire, uh, so much history on the toggle that I can't cover it all in today's video. But let's just say this. This first model was, is very hard to find. Extremely, extremely hard to find. In fact, uh, in 15 years of buying and selling thousands and thousands and thousands of razors and collecting them over the years, I think this is the second one I've, we've ever had, and we actually just got it recently. Uh, came from uh, just a guy out there in the Midwest who found it at a uh, at a thrift not a thrift he, at an estate sale. He found it at an estate sale and contacted us, and we scooped it up. and I'm happy to have it in the collection now. Um, and these are really interesting because they're actually serial numbered. So this is number one seven one six. 1716 they have a little tiny serial number right over here in the corner so very reminiscent of old Gillette razors you know we haven't seen serial numbers since 1930 and here we are 1956 1957 so it's been you know 26 27 years since serial numbering but Gillette was very excited about this when it came out the original price point on the toggles was, I believe, $14.50, but very, very expensive. Um, 
it later was reduced down to ten dollars that you know that's what people think of these guys this is the ten dollar model from 58 and 60 always sold at christmas time another big thing all the advertisements you're going to see for these guys uh, all the promotions and the, even the date codes themselves are usually around christmas time they're always like the d4 or f4 toggle um, they did have a couple other variations of this. You know, we think of toggles being gold-plated like this, but they did have what some people call the chrome toggles, and that's really a misnomer. They are, in fact, nickel. They're not chrome-plated at all. Um, Gillette really didn't do any chrome plating outside of 1930, 1931 with some of the big boy deluxes and stuff. This is it. Um, this is nickel and it again has this kind of really weird stubby toggle there's not a little red dot down here it does work both ways uh, so it is kind of a hybrid it's not like this anymore but it's not quite like this guy um, so kind of a stubbier toggle it is one through nine but it has a mechanical stop so it doesn't just stop based off of the clicker alone it actually has this little stop that hits the clicker up here and it stops it the inside looks different than both of them. It looks kind of like a, a super speed, I guess, maybe even a tech razor. Really interesting inside. And these are day coded F4. Um, I don't believe these, I think they were sold in 1960, but I think the parts are really from 1958. So very odd piece here. These were sold for 750. And I happen to have a mint condition one that has the blades and instructions and, and serial card and everything. The funny thing is this set was completely untouched, has the original warranty card. It says that it's number 7647, but that number doesn't appear on it. It's not serial numbered like this earlier model. Um, I have seen some pictures and have had some experience with taking them apart and there is a date code inside or numbers inside. Um, so it's kind of a, it's kind of like the Indiana Jones of, of razors over here. Very. Um, a lot of research goes into figuring out these models. You know, this is another obscure kind of one that it has the same presentation case as the 56, uh, but it, it has a nickel razor inside. And it even has this weird little styrene cap. And I, we do have instructions that show this cap that went on here, which I guess to protect it in this little suede case uh, so it doesn't mess it up or get scuffed up or whatever but very, very cool piece of history. Um, you know, not bragging guys, I just, you know, full disclosure, all these sets except for this guy here are completely unused. I got this from a very, very well-known longtime collector in the community who passed away a few years ago. Um, I got this from a customer who literally bought it himself at the grocery store he worked at in 1960 and put it in a sock drawer and never touched it again. Uh, here in Phoenix and so completely unused and I got this also from a, a very um, pristine source that's never been touched it's uncirculated even so really really cool pieces of history here I love this stuff this is I think my absolute favorite uh, period of history for Gillette as you guys know I've designed uh, our own adjustable razor the Rex Ambassador and honestly a lot of that love for the adjustable razors comes off the toggle um, I think there's something so cool about it. It's, 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 you know, butterfly razors are neat, but now we have another element. We can adjust it and we can change the way it shaves. That's the whole point of this is that you had all the exposures of the super speed trio in one handle. So a lot of people don't know, but one, two, and three on your toggle are going to be like your blue tip. So click one, two, three, and then four, five, and six are going to be like your um, flare tip or your regular, and then seven, eight, nine are going to be like your heavy or your red tip. So you can get all the settings of those Super Speed Trio in one handle. And that was the whole point. You had a razor that could be used for anyone. Now, this razor series was so popular and people loved it that Gillette wanted to really slim it down on the price. And that's how we get into the later models of Fat Boys and Slims. And we can, we'll talk about that in another video, but know that in very Gillette fashion, their, their, uh, their creation here, this idea of an adjustable razor, was presented at the highest level first, not the cheapest. And that's, I think it's a smart business model. Always come out with the nicest thing first, and then you can bring it down in price and show other variations over time to be more budget friendly. But, you know, talk about a way to make a splash. 
these sets are so cool. The, the standard production toggle, you can take the case apart and it turns into a travel case. Uh, I think it's a really neat feature of it. A lot of people don't know that. You unsnap this little part here, unsnaps, and then you, you pull out the whole tray and you can actually travel with this razor. Very, very cool piece. I think that was kind of part of uh, what made it unique for Gillette is that they were always thinking about, you know, the guy on the go. I mean, it was one of the oldest uh, themes we've seen here is that Gillette was always marketing for the businessman and the, the executive and the guy who needed to pack up and wanted to throw this really handsome suede packaging, um, you know, into, into their, their briefcase. I remember showing some of this packaging design to a professional packaging company today and they were just blown away. When we were doing R&D on the Ambassador, we, we brought some of these sets and we're showing them, you know, what uh, fancy adjustable razors, you know, used to be packaged and they couldn't believe how nice and how elaborate uh, the packaging was. I even just like the this chipboard look of the box. I mean, talk about something that people on Etsy and people today are, you know, always going after this kind of real, you know, simple, clean look. Well, that's Gillette. And that's one reason I fell in love with this company as a collector, guys, is I just loved their advertising, loved this, this attention to detail, um, everything about it, the price tags, the foil stamping, the leather, the, the cardboard, just always was the best. And I, I was, I, how could you not love that, guys? How could you not love it? Now, let's do the, the rarity scale. So uh, on a scale of one to five, one being you can find it any time you go out thrifting and Five, it belongs in a museum. I am happy to say I would think um, the toggle, the regular production toggle, the razor itself, easily three and a half, I would say, just the razor itself. You'd have the, you have the case and everything included, four, four and a half out of five easily. You get into some of these other sets here, the nickel sets or the serial number set, doesn't matter what condition it's in, I'd say instantly four and a half or five out of five, certainly with the packaging, five out of five. This is some of the, uh, most um, kind of prized possessions in the Razor Emporium collection that we have, and we're so happy to have them. One flaw I will mention real quick on the toggle, and one thing if you have one you may want to notice, is that this adjustable design was abandoned, and it was a it was a piece in development for Gillette, and they went more towards the fat boy and the slim design on, uh, for a reason, because you'll notice that if you kind of rack this back and forth, the guard and the doors and the T-bar can get out of alignment and the whole thing gets cockeyed. And a lot of customers who have us work on a toggle or send one in or uh, have a question on one will always say, oh, is that supposed to be that way? And well, that's just the way they were designed. They, you know, this was a evolution. And by the time they got to the fat boy, they got it much better worked out, the adjustment mechanism, but that's part of the process. Um, you know, you can't imagine that Apple comes out with the Apple iPhone number nine right off the bat. No, they had to go through many incarnations to get there and have to learn and have to hear back from customers. And Gillette did that. In fact, a lot of these rare obscure sets, the nickel ones and stuff, the old serial numbers, those were actually sold into uh, test market regions and Gillette would get feedback from those customers to learn how they can make it better. It was a new thing. They, they couldn't just come out and be perfect right off the bat. So it's something to consider. It's always an evolution. That's all I got, guys. I think this has been a, one of the most exciting videos I've done. If you can't see the, the excitement radiating off my face here, uh, love, love everything about the Adjustable Series. Thank you so much for watching. If there's something I missed or something about one of these Razor models that you want to mention on the toggles, let me know in the comments. And if you do, always, you're entered into win this the Razor Emporium black and blue t-shirt. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for being part of our channel. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time at Razor Emporium for all things vintage shaving.